Here is the storage page of Sample HCI management platform. As you can see here, the summary shows all the general information of your virtual storage in the cluster. You can see the ut utilization of your storage and also you can see the IOPS, IO throughput, latency, storage usage as well as, well as cache hit rate because we're using SSD as cache. So all the writes and reads will be going to the cache disk. If it's hit, then the system will read the data or write the data directly from the SSD. Otherwise, the data will be retrieved from the HDD to be written or read. iSCSI virtual disks, disks is like creating a iSCSI virtual disk in the virtual storage of the HCI cluster. This virtual disk can be used by third-party VMs like the VMWell or Hyper-V VMs or be used, be accessed by physical servers. So basically it's like shared storage that created by our virtual storage and it can be accessed by third-party servers no matter it's physical or virtual servers. Shared disks is like, you know, you create a shared storage pool in the virtual storage of Sample HCI, and this shared storage will be used by certain VMs. Oracle Rack is one example of this kind. Settings. On the settings, you can see the disks. You know, you can even click a single disk and get the detailed information of this specific disk. So this is a very fine granular management platform. Okay, and you can manage all your files which are stored on the storage. You can upload the file right here. Okay. You can upload your, iOS, your, your, your OS ISOs from this page. You can also you know, upload them when you create the VMs. You can also enable data store sharing. That is like the fire sharing on your Windows. Basically, you can show this fire to other people within the same department. On the, uh, on the advanced page, you can get the you know advanced settings of the storage. You can create a data balancing task. You know because the data balancing task will uh, initialize some data migration or you know data copy of the storage, so it will have certain impact on your applications. So we recommend you, if you want to do this data balancing, you know, you, you better do it uh, during the unbusy hours. There are also, you know, some detailed explanation of each features. Okay, let's go to note. As you can see here, we have two nodes in the cluster and also you can add another node if there is available one in the same IP segment. You can configure the IP you know, of the management interface and the overlay network interface right here. Let's go to VXLAN, which is our overlay network interface. Typically, the IP address for the VXLAN port is an internal IP address. You need to make sure that the IP address won't you know, collide with your existing business IP or other IP addresses in your existing network. So first, you need to allocate a, an IP address pool for the VXLAN connection use. Okay, as you can see here, we have two nodes. So we have already, you know, 
allocate we have already allocated two IP addresses to be used by the VXLAN. If, if you have three, you have four, you can also you know allocate more IP addresses for the VXLAN deployment. There is also an a there is also an example to show you what you can do what, what you can do to make this happen. Okay, you have already set a specific range of your IP address for your VXLAN, and now you need to select the port to be connected to the VXLAN network. Here we have already selected ETH1 on each node to be used by this overlay network interface. And also, you know, to, to maximize the performance of VXLAN, we recommend you to take off this enable high performance mode button okay because vxlan requires larger packet to be passed by the switch also and you need to activate the jumbo frame feature on your switch to make sure that the performance of the vxlan is maximized Click OK, and all the changes will be made. To see a detailed summary of a specific node, you can click Summary, and then the page is basically basically the same, like the VM summary. Okay, you can see the you know CPU memory disk usage of this certain node. Also, you can see this you know IO IO IOPS and you know IO speed of the, the of, of this node. About the network, you can also see, you know, we have, typically we have four types of network. The first one is management, which is used to manage the clusters. And overlay is for the network virtualization. Storage, of course, is for storage. You know, all the IOs, all the data uh, is stored via the storage network to the, to the disk. And for the storage, you can see that there, there, there is local storage. Here is the actually it is the OS disk, and for the data store, it means the shared disk, shared storage pool that was that is based on the virtual storage. You can also see the VMs that are running on this specific node. go back to the node, nodes page and you can also see storage here there's a storage button here when you click this button you can see there are some other you know functions you can use regarding the storage you can add external storage here we can support third-party iSCSI sun or fiber channel sun you can also if you have you know additional local disks on, on, on the nodes, you can also add the disk to the local storage. If there are some, if there is available external storage, like you have a SCSI SAN storage in, in, in your network, in your data center, you can you just connect that storage to the storage switch, and then the storage will be displayed here. You simply you know, add a certain lump of that storage to to be used by our HCI platform. You can back up your VMs data to the external storage just to ensure the data, you know, security and reliability. We can also support, you know, NFS or SIFs for, for the NAS external storage attachment. All right.